Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here and I'm about to show you what I found. But before I do, let's talk about this week's tip. Now, you guys have seen me do my episodes of That's Not an Error. And, uh, well, there's a lot of things that aren't errors that people find all the time. People will see legitimate errors and sell them selling for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And they think that all they have to do is buy one strap of singles or less, and they're going to find something that's worth a million dollars too. Not the case. The whole point of those prices is because those are extremely difficult to find. Um, YouTube's inundated with things like, don't spend this bill if you find it, and they show you a note where it's all ones. Well, yeah, that's a 1 in 10 million shot of actually finding a solid. You're probably not going to spend that. You probably don't need to be told not to spend that. However, you probably are also never going to find one of those. I'm probably never going to find one of those. But they're worth that much because of how rare they are. Um, if, like I said, you buy a strap of singles and you find six notes that have similar errors, then... I'm probably in the wrong for saying that they're not errors. I should I should be saying they are not valuable errors. Um, the better way to put that is um, when people collect coins, they look for the smallest possible detail in the coin to make it an error. And they need a microscope to do so. Because with a coin, you're talking first and foremost about a, a metal and you're talking about two hard metals that are coming down in rapid succession to make the coin itself. Well, with that amount of pressure, every coin's probably going to come out the same. In fact, people look for certain die markers uh, to identify which die was used in coins because that little blemish that's going to go through on every single coin. It takes a huge, huge effort to make a coin, which means the smallest detail on a coin, oh, that is a major, major error. But when you're talking paper money, that's not the case. You're talking about something that bends. You're talking about something that can be lined up and has to be lined up three different times, by the way. They do the first print on the back, the second print here, and the third print is the serial numbers. There's tons of time for different things to happen. It's very easy for certain notes to become misaligned. Here's here, this one here. Look at how thick the top is compared to the bottom. Look at how thin the side is compared to how thick it is on this side. Is this worth? Is this note worth anything? No, it's not. Because they print so many, it's okay for them to be off just slightly. Anyway, there's a lot of people that are trying to make a lot of money off of errors. I'm doing my part to help stop it. And... Uh, you know, that, that's what I've got for this week. Now, the first note that I found, here's what I found this week, by the way. Let's slide these out of the way. The first note that I found this week kind of falls into that uh, category. Um, look at the seven. The seven's broken. Look at that. That must be worth a million dollars, right? No. Actually, you can kind of see what happened here. There's a crease in the paper there. And the crease in the paper, let's see if I can get that to stay focused, uh, most likely happened after the printing process. And because it happened after the printing process, that means that small portion where there was a hard crease through the number um, is definitely raised. Now, if this note was to have been stepped on, that could have easily come off. Even if it was an error, okay? Even if this was printed this way, because the note is circulated, I just gave a very believable reason why this wouldn't be an error. So even if it was an actual error, the condition of this note prohibits it from being worth anything extra because I just gave a very rational explanation for how that could have happened. So like I said, as odd as many of you may find that to be, there's just no way to prove that this happened during the printing process. So... I'm going to go with not an error. Proving that it was part of the printing process, that's the hard part. And I, I wish I could zoom in a, you know, a little closer. But yeah, that crease, like I said, <laughs> the, some of you would think, oh, it's an interior gutter fold. Uh, no, because it's 
the crease is going the other direction. <laughs> it's coming this way through. So no, I, I'm not calling that an error. I'm going to keep that as an interesting note in my collection, but I don't, I don't think there's any additional value on that. All right. Uh, next note, somebody was very eager to point out that this fancy serial number is called a full house. Uh, first of all, a full house, it has two zeros and three sixes. Um, that would be a full house in poker. The problem is that if a full house had any additional value, which it does not, um, they wrote all over the note. <laughs> so they, by identifying it as a full house, they have destroyed any value that they thought there might have been in this particular uh, note. Um, people do this to play pocket poker where you just reach into your pocket, pull out a note, and whoever has the best poker hand wins. Um, on a note, a full house isn't even that good. You want at least four of a kind. Most people want five or six of a kind if you're going to keep a note like that in your pocket. So, yeah, that's nothing. Uh, let's see. Next up, what do we have here? This note is, uh, let's see, five, seven, five, eight. Oh, duh, where's George? Right across the top. Because it was handwritten, it was not stamped, which kind of made it all go together. So I will log that one. Here's another Where's George. I've never seen one like this before. That's an interesting stamp. It's got the date that they stamped it. Uh, then I got some trinaries. Sevens, eights, and nines. Zeros, fours, and fives. Fours, sevens, and nines. Ones, fives, and sixes. Twos, threes, and eights. Twos, threes, and nines. Ones, fives, and nines. And this is quads. Quad zeros. And when you find quad zeros, that's how you want to find them. Starting out the note like that, because that makes this a fairly low number. That's only number 4,773. So that's a pretty, pretty cool find there. Quad ones. Quad fours. Quad fives. Quad fives with a fifth. Quad sixes. And it's interesting because when you, whenever you get quads like that, it's very easy to see when any of the numbers aren't quite lined up right. It looks like uh, it looks like one of these is higher or lower than the other. Um, once again, people start screaming, oh, it's a gas pump error. It's an odometer error. Uh, no, you're going to see what that's supposed to look like in just a second. <laughs> All right. Uh, so then we've got quad sixes here with a fifth. Interesting stain there. I don't want to know what that was. Quad sixes again. And again, on an older note, 2006, quad nines. And here's five fours, five of a kind. That would easily beat that full house, by the way. Uh, my stars, checking my stars, 2017A, not filled in. Another 2017A, 2017. Another 2017, pretty good condition on this one. This one's also good, 2017. 2017, 2017. And again, a couple zeros here, maybe something good. So I'm still finding my share of stars. Here's another 2013B note, uh, possibly repeated. 2013. And then some of the older notes. Here's a 2003, 2001. Pretty good shape on that one. 1999. Another 99. 1995. That one's pretty rough. And the oldest note I found was a 1988A, not a web note. All right, so that's what I found this week. What did I pull out? Well, I've been talking about errors and specifically gas pump errors. Um, here is, what does this say? FR 1982, not the year, by the way. The, some of the FR numbers get to be confused with the years once they get this high. FR 1982B, this is a 1995 $5 error. Uh, Federal Reserve note graded about new choice, about new 58, and it has a stuck suffix, okay? The suffix is the second part. You have the pre prefix, which is comes before, pre is before, suffix is after. Now, you can see it's supposed to have a B in the front and an A in the end, and this A is most certainly raised, and it's raised to the point that the top portion of the A is missing, and underneath the A, you can see the bottom, or the top portion of the B also being printed on the note, just that little line. 
So when you start talking about odometer errors, gas pump errors, that's what you're looking for. If you don't have a note that is partially missing or it has part of another on there, um, there's no additional value there. There's there's just not. Now, one other thing that I want to point out with this particular note is this 6 is a little dark and this 7 is a little dark. And you notice they didn't put that on there <laughs> because that doesn't matter. When you have a note where one digit is slightly darker than the other, that's not a thing. The rest of this note's in real good shape. You can see with the sunlight coming through, you can actually see the security strip right there. Uh, I think it's neat that it says stuck suffix and the L in the word letter is missing on this particular thing. That just means this has been graded a while ago and it probably got scratched off there. But still, I find that really funny that it's missing a letter uh, when I'm missing a letter on the note. Taking a look at the back, uh, of course, it's in real good shape. There's no notation there on the back anywhere. Um, but yeah, you can see the condition on this one is really nice. But once again, that's what makes it an error. It's more than an odometer error because it's missing. Well, I don't want to say it's more, but I mean, it's an error and a legitimate error because a portion of it is missing and a portion of the next one is actually showing on there. That's what you're looking for when it comes to these gas pump errors. If you learned anything new this week, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see and you want to see more, please subscribe. Love reading all your comments. Guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.